Well, hello class. Now we have a whole lecture devoted just to the breasts. So a lot about breasts. It's a shortish one compared to some other big systems, but uh, uh, yeah, let's get right to it. All right, so um, breasts, I thought in, in gross anatomy, society, well, what's in these things, you know, but when you dissect, you know, 89 year olds, it's fat and uh, fibrous tissue in there. And the fat is kind of separated by these, these ligaments, these suspensory ligaments, so it's in little compartments, yeah. But on the outside, you have a, a nipple, well, a nipple and an areola is the darkened region around it. Little bumps called Montgomery's tubercles around there and, uh, sebaceous glands that empty into there because the breastfeeding can can chap the, the nipples quite a bit um, yeah and looking in there you have it's a gland it's a it's a modified uh, uh, sweat gland so you drink a glass of milk you're drink, drinking a modified sweat it just has a lot of uh, uh, fats and uh, proteins and other things in it um, so all the little lobules that are found within the breast they all uh, um, So here's a little, little lobules. Like it's three dimensions though. It's gonna go all around. There's little ducts that come together. It's like different ducts. And eventually they open up to uh, um, to uh, openings around the nipple. And these uh, lactiferous ducts carry the milk that's produced by the by the glands. And it's amazing how the breasts they change so much from in pregnancy. Um, and look at the histology of them. And inactive breasts, if you're not out there pregnant or breastfeeding or anything, it's just lots of connective tissue and the ducts are all small. The ducts are there, but then the glands are tiny around the ducts. But you look at, a, take a slice of a lactating breast, it's just tons of cells all the way around these ducts producing this milk. Yeah. And then you go back to nor no, not normal again ever, but you go back to the, uh, the uh, uh, not producing milk and uh, you could do it all again. And uh, changes in the breast comes related to hormones, right? Yeah, another view of it, looking at that, yes. Yeah. yeah you can see it, they show the lymph nodes in the armpit here because the breast cancer will often spread this direction, as you know. And so, yeah, <clears throat> the fat sits out there. Uh, it's part of the hypodermis, part of your skin. But there's a lot of fat is deposited there on top of your pec uh, major right there. Yeah. And then you see these lobules of glands. And then the duct system all empties into that nipple. And just looking at the evolution of, of mammary glands, it makes us mammals, right? Um, there's a lot, there's papers, a lot of talk that the, the first function of milk was not to nourish the young, but to give antibodies, to give immunity to the young. And if you look along among mammals, the most primitive mammals, like the platypus and the echidna, they don't even have nipples. They just have a milk patch on their belly and the milk comes out and the babies just lick it off. They lick it off there. And so that's what they do. And then you can see in a cow or a goat, they have this big like cistern where the milk gathers. I don't know if you ever milked, you got to kind of pull it down, squeeze it out like that. And then our nipples, there's no like cistern like that. The milk is produced and it comes out the nipples here. And so um, uh, early on, uh, pre-pubertal and uh, in males, you just have ducts, but you don't have any of that, uh, that, that, that glandular tissue doesn't really come about until under influence of hormones. Yep. And males have nipples, but they don't, uh, they don't make any of that, uh, of the uh, tissue to make the milk. They are just rudimentary ducts in there. And during the menstrual cycle, <clears throat> of course, hormones are gonna, gonna um, uh, um, rise and fall. And so some women will have tenderness, so the breasts will enlarge during uh, ovulation and during their periods, that will change as uh, breast tenderness. Because they're, they're just, they listen to hormones, you know, that's what, they're, they're, uh, that's what they're changing. And so every month they will do that. And then after menopause, uh, usually the breasts uh, atrophy, um, and you'll see they get more fibroids in them as you get older as well. Oh, this is breast volumetric, volumetric difference, uh, even within a period. Someone did a scientific paper on that, looking at how the breasts, using three-dimensional imagery, how they get bigger and smaller during just your monthly cycles. You, know, you don't notice it's yeah, cup size or anything, but it is, these changes happen because they're, they're listening to the hormones. And during pregnancy, again, yes, uh, big time. 
And then uh, the nipples get, the areola gets darker when you're pregnant. It kind of stays that way. They get more pigment uh, after you, you had a kid. And uh, probably as a kind of a signal so the, the kid can find a nipple, you know, it's kind of like a target so they, they know where to latch on to. And um, <clears throat> you guys remember the hormones involved with milk production is that uh, um, prolactin is the hormone um, comes from your pituitary and that's going to cause milk production. And oxytocin is the one that expresses the milk. It's going to, on those ducts will be uh, myoepithelial cells or muscle cells that'll squeeze the milk out. So they'll express the milk. Yeah, so lactation, uh, producing milk. So uh, yeah, the milk is filled with not only fats and, and proteins and water, but it's got antibodies from mom too they, they, that are transferred to the child. So breastfeeding, it's one of the reasons it's, it's better than bottle and feeding. You can't really replace everything in a, in a formula that comes from the mother's milk. And then once lactation stops, uh, it's gonna just uh, go, back, uh, go back to pre-lactation levels. Yeah. But as long as there's breastfeeding, that stimulation, oxytocin is released, um, it's going to continue to um, um, produce milk. So anything mammal means breast. Uh, and mast also refers to the breast. Your mastoid process is this bump here. The Greeks thought it looked like a breast, I guess. It was kind of kind of bulby like that. So mammography, mastectomy, breast, breast, breast. All right, so some issues, uh, obviously breast cancer. So carcinoma of the breast, um, and uh, it's up there <clears throat> um, in, in, in terms of uh, killers of, of, of women, especially. Men, like less than 1% of can breast cancers are men, but they can get it as well. Yeah, and so uh, that's why mammographies are important for, and for checking for, for lumps, self-examinations are so important. A uh, majority of these, uh, these tumors will be benign, but uh, some will be uh, uh, malignant. All right, another problem is mastitis. Mastitis is going to be an infection in the breast tissue. Usually during breastfeeding, you'll see that's just a painful redness on the breast when these ducts, bacteria will grow in that. And so, yeah. A surgically changing breast size, of course. Um, having really large breasts can cause back problems and posture problems and uh, breathing problems. And so a breast reduction is a, is a pretty common um, surgery. Uh, it's, it's pretty in intense and involved removing fatty tissue from the breast. And then breast enlargements on the other hand is, is cosmetic or if you've had a mastectomy to, I mean, it's not just to make larger breasts for some reason, uh, it's to, uh, to restore, you know, your feeling of, you know, looking, uh, feeling like a woman, et cetera. Listen to me, like I have, can talk about this, but um, uh, obviously breast enlargements uh, uh, is uh, you, you put in saline or something uh, in front or back in the muscle to, uh, to do that. So that's a big surgery, breast enlargement or reduction. <clears throat> Gynecomastia. Uh, Men will have uh, breast enlargements if they have, especially if there's an endocrine issue. It's got to be a hormone issue that causes uh, growth of the breasts in men. All right. So symptoms, signs, tests. Uh, tenderness of the breasts, common in the menstrual cycle. So your breasts will feel tender. Uh, if you have mastitis, you'll see a redness right on there, usually kind of localized to part of the breast and, and pain involved with that. Now, what about uh, neoplasms? So um, this is where it's important to, for lumps, where self-checking and then you know, med medical professionals can check and look for lumps and the size and the location. All these things are, are good clues. Um, most lumps are not cancer, definitely. Um, you're gonna have uh, fibroids that just uh, are forming and they're not going to be uh, spreading to other organs, yeah. So looking at the age, you can see uh, cancer appears later in life on average than these fibro changes. Galactorrhea is making milk uh, uh, when you're not supposed to outside of pregnancy. So milk and other fluids will come from the breast and uh, can be signs of some usually endocrine problems too. Yeah, definitely. So you, you could have some kind of growth in a duct, something that's producing this fluid. Hormones, I'm showing you. 
All right, and of course, uh, the physical exam, as I mentioned, uh, not only doing a, a palpation to look for lumps, make sure like all around the breast, make sure there's no lumps. And then uh, to look at it, you can have a, sometimes a, a dimple on the breast. Uh, the nipple can be, can, and you can have an inverted nipple, but if it's like a change where all of a sudden you have that or some kind of change in the texture, anything that's unusual in the breast, you're gonna have changes, monthly changes, but something you notice that's a continuous, um, something to, to, to look for. But we have techniques, mammographies, and the ultrasound. You can see taking a look, you get a good view inside the breast. And so, um, um, uh, and some, it's more difficult for, for uh, women that have more uh, fibrous or solid breasts. So some, I guess, are easier than others to do mammography on. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a good screening tool. And so, uh, um, you know, after age 40, and again, these numbers, are, they're not exact, but uh, definitely when you get into your 40s, your, your risk for having um, um, carcinoma of the breast increases. So we wanna screen you, get our yearly uh, mammography. Um, yeah, and young, younger women, ultrasound. Ultrasound could take a look in there. They can look for, for anything as, as well. Um, and again, these recommendations you know, I'm telling you now, it's going to change all the time as, as we, as we learn more and, and where you're talking about. But yeah, but clearly you want to screen for uh, breast cancer. You want to just do regular screenings because you catch it early. You can excise it, remove the whole problem. If you, if it's larger and it's already moved, you know, you got more issues. Yeah. And so, um, um, yeah, this is showing different ways to do it to a, to do a biopsy. Um, fancy machines here where they, they guide it, you know, they, they guide it, uh, ultrasound or other imaging techniques, and they move the needle right into that tumor and bring it out. And they can, uh, pathologists can look at the sample. All right, <clears throat> so let's get to the first disease. We'll talk about some developmental issues. And uh, just to put it in perspective here, uh, humans, all mammals have these milk lines from their armpit to their groin and breasts can form anywhere along there. So you think about your cat, your dog, your pig, you know, it's gonna have nipples along this line, lots of them. We just form breasts at one part, you know, and then elephants, some, some males have breasts in their, their, their um, um, armpit, more in their armpit region, down the groin, even whales have, have, have where the breasts are. And so anywhere along this line, they can grow. And in many, it's pretty common, I don't have the numbers for you, but to have these um, supernumerary nipples where you have Addition, and it looks like a mole. You may, you think it's look. And you think about yourself. Do you have a mole there? It's going to be above or below. Usually below. You'll have this mole, and uh, and it, sometimes you can even uh, during your period it can, it can leak a little uh, fluid even if it's. But sometimes not. Sometimes it's just a mole. But these are just remnants where breasts could have grown, but they, we only have two breasts. And evolutionary in the in the in the world of mammals, usually you have. <clears throat> Uh, well, we have twice as many breasts as our normal litter size. We have two breasts, one kid, um, and our maximum is usually twins. And back in the day, if you had, um, when we were just nomadic, sometimes when you had twins, they would just kill one of them because they can only carry one at a time. So our normal litter size is one. And in today's world, where you make strollers that hold three or four kids, I mean, it's, it's only because we have all this support behind us. If you had to carry the kid, two would be really tough, wouldn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so um, our breast uh, number is, is, is two, but you do have these, these milk lines that uh, you could grow breasts anywhere along there. Nipples or more of the tissue. It's usually just a mole. So this mastitis, let's talk more about this mastitis, although I think I've, I've covered most of it uh, just introducing it, but uh, usually during lactation, uh, you, you have mastitis forms and it's painful and um, uh, caused by bacterial infection and uh, usually because the areola gets kind of dry and cracked with all this breastfeeding and then bacteria have a way to get in there and so they'll give you some antibiotics but it's a painful condition. Yeah and then this is just looking at the the ducts themselves can, can become inflamed this duct ectasia and uh, yeah near menopause and you have uh, these milk ducts that get blocked up and, and, and inflamed. And you, know, you may think you know, the breast hurts have cancer, but it's just an infection of the duct. <clears throat> All right, so fibrocystic changes in the breast. 
And as you get it to, to be an uh, older and older woman, uh, these just, you have fibrous changes, the breasts, they, they, the overall tissue gets less and it becomes more and more fibrous, definitely. Um, and sometimes this fibric change can, can increase risk of breast cancer, it's true. It's very common, usually both breasts and usually inoculus, either cyst is more fluid filled or, or, or fibrous. So very common, this fibrocystic change. All right. Um, yeah, look at this. This is introductal papilloma. So well, this is a picture of as a duct. And then this structure in here is a growth in there, growth of cells. So um, um, when they find these introductal papillomas, um, uh, they, they would want to remove that, obviously. So these introductal papillomas, these little uh, cells that are proliferating in these ducts. And ductal hyperplasia is where the ducts just start dividing. So you can see you've got all these cells. <clears throat> and um, you can see here it's even, it's progressed where that hyperplasia has become cancerous. So when you see ductal hyperplasia, it means your duct cells, they're, boy, they're, they, there's way too many cells. Is that just a single layer? Yeah, and they may not show up in a, a, a mammography or it may, you know, depending on how thick it is. A benign fibroadenoma. So remember adenoma is from glands. And so you can see here, you've got a, a breast, there's gonna be a lump there. And it's where the, the glands have just formed a fibrous, um, a fibrous mass. So again, when you see a mass in your breast, there's a lot of things it could be besides uh, uh, cancer. Yep, as you get, you get older, you get more of them. This is rare, this Philodes tumor has to do like kind of leaf-like, but this is just a really rapidly growing uh, uh, lesion. And so um, um, this is the same as like a fibroid, fibroid, but it really is grows fast. It can go really rapidly and, and, and dramatically. Yeah. All right, carcinoma. So here we're talking about some, some real cancer of the breast. Um, yeah, as you say, normally 62 is the, the median age where it's diagnosed. And in your lifetime, about a 12% risk as a woman, of course, um, to, to, to have, a, have this breast cancer. So frequently diagnosed cancer. Uh, lung cancer is more deadly, but uh, um, we get more breast cancers. So what causing it, I mean, sometimes we just don't know, but uh, this BRCA gene, interesting, you can uh, read up on this if you're not familiar with it. But this uh, gene is a tumor suppressor which means that um, you're just really likely to get breast cancer. The numbers are really, really high if you have a mutation in this gene. There's a one and a two. And even other, other cancers. So even males that have uh, this BRCA gene doesn't mean they're exempt from any issues because they get other cancers from this as well. Um, yeah, you can see on the chromosomes, you have a couple BRCA genes. Uh, comes from breast, breast cancer uh, genes where BRCA comes from. Yep, but even though you know this BRCA gene is very likely to cause breast cancer, most breast cancers aren't caused by, by that, uh, any inherited disease. They just come about from, from the environment, we believe. Yes, so ma majority of breast cancer is sporadic, sporadic um, meaning there are many different causes, different genes from all over are causing this, this uh, causing cells to become cancerous. Well, obviously being females, you're biggest risk. Uh, males just rarely get breast cancer. And a mastectomy works. If you remove the breast tissue, you remove any possibility of getting breast cancer. So if you have the BRCA gene, you may decide to get a mastectomy just to prevent you from getting cancer. Yeah. And exposures to estrogens. We'll see that's really interesting cancers that um, respond to hormones like estrogen. And take a look at your breast cancer risk as you get older. So most of you out there, we're looking at, yeah, your odds are one in 20,000. But as you get to be uh, 85, it's one in nine. So clearly with age and being female comes breast cancer risk. Risk doesn't necessarily come, obviously. And some of the risk factors we know for breast cancer, uh, again, this is well-studied. Um, um, 
if you had early period or you had a late menopause, uh, not having children, not breastfeeding, obesity, getting estrogen therapies, getting older, whites more than other, other, other races, higher socioeconomic status. Interesting, huh? Uh, a lot of alcohol consumption and lack of physical activity. So these things, I mean, there's been all kinds of studies on breast cancer. These things pop up in the studies as being uh, uh, not helpful to, to getting, not getting breast cancer. That was a complicated way of saying that, right? Not helpful, not getting breast cancer. I could have said that easier. All right, so some carcinomas ductal or, or, or lobular. These are going to be uh, carcinomas of the, the glands in the, in the ducts. Yeah. Yep. So um, both of these, they, they, um, they, they, um, they're treated the same, so it doesn't really matter in terms of talking about how to treat them. But yeah, so you've got uh, abnormalities in the ductal cells. You're going to have... Uh, uh, or in any of the glands, you have ductal adenoma, ad adenocarcinoma, and lobular adenocarcinoma. Uh, I'm in trouble. Okay, carcinomas in situ, you know, um, they're, they're not spreading around, and they can be uh, ductal or lobular as well. So um, you can cut these out, and you're fine when you hear in situ. But if you never know if they're going to become malignant and start spreading. So you can see this one. They do a biopsy, this is in situ. This one, it doesn't have any borders. It's just like, it's just going. So what do you do? Uh, treatment for breast cancer, excision. See a scar here. That's, uh, if they can do it, they can find it and they're gonna check to see has it spread. If not, they can just excise it. A lumpectomy um, will remove the cancer um, if it's, uh, it's not too big and they can, they, can, they can get it out. If not, then we're talking radiation, chemo, your standard uh, tools. And of course, staging, you don't have to memorize all the staging criteria, but you can see, you find it early on, <clears throat> they can cut it out and it's 100%, you know, survival rate. Uh, it's already uh, spread in five years, you know, 27%. Some other things they can do is this hormone therapy. Yes, and so cancer cells, certain ones, um, they have uh, receptors for estrogen, and so they really grow with estrogen. So you take it estrogen away or block those receptors, and the tumor stops growing. So um, yeah, that's a, a cool way targeted to look at only certain cancers. You've got to make sure it's the right type of cancer. I have those receptors. So anti-estrogenic agents. They block the estrogen. There's another uh, growth factor you find on cancer cells, uh, this HER2 thing, uh, and it's found out that um, you can uh, um, uh, block these and then the cell doesn't grow, so it has these receptors for this. So another way we can do it is work on, you got to find out, is this, this a, a cancer that, that responds, it has these receptors, and then we can have uh, drugs that go and bind to it. And when you find a breast uh, cancer, you want to look how it has it traveled or not. So we call them sentinel lymph nodes. They're like sentinels, they're like the ones that sit on the castle wall and look for bad guys coming in and see how far does it travel. And so um, they can inject dye and then <clears throat> uh, they will uh, wait or kind of massage the tissue and they see where it spreads, which direction does it go. And uh, uh, that can, can be used to, to to, to see where they should look to see if it's spread. Yeah, so here's a, here's a melanoma here. And so they put some dye and they saw, oh, it's gonna spread to these lymph nodes. All right, so to give you your prognosis, what are the important factors to tell you how long you're gonna live if they diagnose you with this cancer? Well. Size of the tumor, gray, what do the cells look like? Are they differentiated or not? Are they really weird or are they not? Um, lymph nodes, we looked at these lymph nodes. Hey, it didn't, it didn't travel to lymph nodes. That's going to help your prognosis, definitely. And if they find it has either these estrogen or this HER receptors, that's also your prognosis because they can give drugs that, for those. Now, if they don't have any of the targets like these, then your prognosis is not so great. Um, so they, they, you want to find out that they, they respond to these things because then we know how to treat them. Uh, otherwise, the cancer is just going to spread and grow. All right. 
Again, gynecomastia is a, a male breast tissue will grow. Usually it may be a little swelling there and they can have breast cancer as well. Uh, and it can be excised and taken, taken out, again, if it's just a fibrous kind of thing. Um, but it's generally when we look at issue, the issues with estrogen, uh, issues with, with that are gonna cause this. Finally, yes, and so uh, too, the, um, um, the, the having the BRCA, BRCA gene, uh, much more likely women to get breast cancer, but increases male breast cancer risk too, definitely. Um, yeah, male breast cancer, older, definitely. Uh, usually uh, detected later, so it's not so good. But male breast cancer is only 1% of breast cancers, and a lifetime risk you can see instead of 12%, it's 0.11%, so less likely. All right, we've talked about all things diseases and breasts. Uh, uh, hopefully uh, you, you got it, and um, um, yeah, all right. Hope you had a, hope you're having a great day.